Are you ready? What the oh. fuck? Oh. What's up guys, boy Benny? What is the most dangerous and deadly force that mankind has ever known? This will come as a shock to you that it is not Hillary Clinton singing, although this is horrible. You're gonna hear me Weapon of mass destruction right there. Uh, ready the troops. We got to invade. Wherever that is, got to invade. Got to get Hillary Clinton to stop singing. Okay? Send in the troops. Exactly what she wouldn't do in Benghazi. Actually, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, deadliest force ever known to modern human beings is this teeny little red book called the Communist Manifesto. And we have the numbers and the data to back this up, but within the first pages of the Communist Manifesto, you find the destruction of the family, the destruction of all governments, the destruction of the church, the destruction of your civil liberties, the destruction of all of your rights as we know them and understand them, the destruction of your ability to own firearms, and then, ladies and gentlemen, the government can take control and destroy everything else in your life. And this destruction carried on apace for the last 150 years since the writing of that book. The Black Book of Communism actually details all of the deaths that they can estimate per country. This was written by uh, some of the smartest people uh, in the intellectual classes uh, of various ivory halls throughout the world. A ton of authors uh, that got together to, to essentially estimate how many people died because they were disarmed. 65 million in China, 20 million in the Soviet Union, 2 million in Cambodia, 2 million in North Korea, 1.7 million in Ethiopia, 1.5 million in Afghanistan, 1 million in the Eastern Bloc, 1 million in Vietnam, 150,000 in Latin America. Uh, all totaled, this equals, well, 100 million people across the globe. The guns were removed and the killing fields began. The commentary of communist China. All political power comes from the barrel of a gun. The communist party must command all the guns. That way, no gun can ever be used in the communist party says Mao Zedong, founder of the Communist Party of China. Mao's first act after gaining complete control of China in 1949 was to take away all guns from the population. The policy he began in 1935 as he took over each rural province. Anyone found with a gun post-confiscation was executed. 65 million Chinese died as a result of Mao. Merciless attempts to create a new socialist China. Anybody who got his way was done away with by execution, imprisonment, or forced famine. Mao killed more people than Stalin or Hitler combined during World War II, and it all began when he took away the guns. 100 years of communism and 100 million dead. And this isn't meant to be necessarily a uh, prolonged history lesson. We would assume that people with just a basic understanding of human nature and human history would already understand this, especially people that went to Harvard, right? Remember David Hogg? Remember how he went to Harvard and got a full ride scholarship for no reason at all? Remember David Hogg, who, well, let's just say, definitely doesn't own any guns. David Hogg, the anti-gun and anti-freedom activist who says you have no right to a gun, parroting perfectly Mao Zedong of the Communist Party of China. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be surprised to know that not only is David Hogg getting community noted, while individual uh, opinions about proper reading of the Second Amendment in the United States Constitution differ wildly, you have for generations in the United States Supreme Court ruled that you do have a right to a gun. You have no right to a gun, says David Hawk. Okay. Fascist Marxist says what? Interestingly, David Hogg did get a history lesson, not from Harvard, but from a Chinese national who fled China after the Communist 
party, took away all of her family's guns, rights, came here to the United States and is now a proud gun owner. This Chinese immigrant gave David Hogg a bit of an education. This is what happens when liberals do open mic, they get wrecked. They can't even defend their position. David Hogg torched by a Chinese immigrant. What is this? Oh man, it is the clip of the day. Here we go. My name is uh, Lily Tang Williams. Welcome to my live free or die state. Actually, I am a, a Chinese immigrant who survived communism. And uh, under Mao, you know, 40 million people were starving to death after he sold the communism to them. And 20 million people died, murdered during his cultural revolution. So my question to you, David, is that can you guarantee me a gun owner tonight? Our government in the US, in DC, will never, never become a tyrannical government. Can you guarantee that to me? There's no way I can ever guarantee that any government will not be tyrannical. Well, then the debate on gun control is over because I will <laughs> never give up my guns. Never, never. And you should go to China to see how gun control works for dictatorship of CCP. Yeah, we uh, know exactly how gun control worked in communist China. All you have to do is look at the academic research to see how a government treats unarmed citizens. When you are unarmed, you are not a threat. If the government has a monopoly on all violence, then you are a slave. That is a slave master relationship. Those are not two co-equal parties. That is a slave and a master. And that is what the government wishes to be, especially in authoritarian dictatorships. And that's what leads, of course, to 100 years of communism and 100 million dead. It is the most deadly force in modern history. Maybe asteroids at some point or the, or the flood with Noah took out more people, perhaps like plagues uh, of the ancient or medieval times took out more people. But in our modern era, nothing, no war, no disease, nothing comes close to communism. Not gun death, of course, gun death in communism, but it's the communism that is killing people, not the firearms. David Hogg uh, hasn't, again, uh, quite understood those subtleties, but did get a complete and total education at this Boston University lecture. This is just a fantastic clip. And in Massachusetts, it's not necessarily easy to get a gun, but personally, I don't believe it necessarily should be because part of having a well-regulated militia we understand in the context of what that meant was well-trained, obviously. Obviously. So do you remember the words obviously in the U.S. Constitution? I'm going to try not to stop this clip every 10 seconds. Remember how the, 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 the founders wrote, like, your rights are like, obviously don't come from God. Like, you have to, like, obviously train your militias. They didn't actually write that. But again, subtly, not their strength. Obviously because they wanted to ensure that at the time they were worried about having standing armies for obvious reasons. Uh, they needed to have well-trained people to serve in the place of that army. And to me- Why would there be needs for well-trained armies? Oh yeah, because there was a government that was sending their soldiers into your house. That's the reason for the well-trained militia, David. The government was sending troops to occupy your home. What the closest interpretation, what I would like to see in the future, uh, my dream scenario is not one where everybody has their guns taken away. It's one where we federalize Massachusetts state gun laws. And that's not necessarily going to prevent all gun violence. I'll be the first to admit that. But I believe it can, it, it can lead to a substantial reduction in it. Um, I have more to say on the suicide aspect, but my time is up. Thank you. Spike, your response. Yeah, so I think it's important to look at what the founders said. Um, and so uh, let's start with the guy who wrote the Second Amendment. Whereas civil rulers may attempt to tyrannize, and as the military forces, which must be occasionally raised to defend the country, might pervert their power to the injury of their fellow citizens, the people are confirmed by this article, the Second Amendment, in their right to keep and bear their private arms. The writer of the Second Amendment was very clear. This is a confirming a pre-existing individual natural right for you to keep and bear arms, and he's explicitly mentioning the fact that you should be able to do that, if necessary, to rise up against your own government. Keep in mind this was a revolutionary government that was being created right after a, a violent revolution to remove the previous rulers. That is the intent 
of the, uh, of the Second Amendment. I don't know of any uh, founders who indicated that they were mandating the, the uh, use of firearms or the ownership of firearms. David, I'm, I'm happy to hear your thoughts on that if there was that did. Um, I've not seen any, anything to that. It's that every person uh, should be able to, to, the, to their own ability and volition, be able to be armed and trained in that so that we have a large pool from which to draw for a militia if necessary. I mean, if you could argue that healthcare is a universal right, you should be able to absolutely, and healthcare doesn't exist anywhere in the Constitution, you should be able to argue that firearm ownership should be a universal right, that you should have a right to a firearm in this country. And that, I mean, if there's something that the government's supposed to protect, they do this in another country, by the way, do you, you know, they do this in another country, they do this in Switzerland, where you have an obligation for training and firearm training and to have a firearm it makes for a very safe and peaceful country, actually, among other things, obviously. But I mean, if you're going to argue that there is a need for some universal right for the government to provide something, maybe that thing should be a firearm. There's a thought. David Hogg uh, getting wrecked as ever. And well, it's been an embarrassing little bout for David Hogg. At, he used to, uh, when the limelight wasn't on him, he would go running into that light and try and disrupt Congress. I'm old enough to remember when this was called uh, the disruption of an official proceeding and you go to jail you for something like this. But he's not wearing a MAGA hat, so you don't go for, to jail for the disruption of an official proceeding if you're not wearing a MAGA hat. The shooter at my high school, anti-Semitic, anti-Black, and racist. The shooter in El Paso described it as an invasion. Guess what? Those guns are coming from the United States of America. Right. They are coming from Mexico. Dude, what's with they the arms? What's with, the, what's, what's with this? You can stop these things. Embarrassing, embarrassing. We do uh, certainly miss Tucker to break down times like these. Um, uh, T Tucker Carlson, obviously doing quite well on X, but some of these old Fox segments were vintage. Here's Tucker Carlson going in on David Hawk. <laughs> so you got the low IQ Harvard student screaming about race, 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 another self-righteous child who has no idea what he's talking about. But David Hogg, appropriately named character, obstructed an official congressional proceeding. Wow, that sounds like insurrection. Liz Cheney, Liz Cheney, isn't that a crime? Is this insurrection that's going to face charges? Liz Cheney. Well, Andy Biggs is the member of Congress whose official business was interrupted by this insurrection. She represents Arizona in the U.S. Congress. He joins us tonight. Congressman, thanks so much for coming on. So... It, I found it interesting that rather, I mean, you were making, you know, people could disagree with the point you were making, but it was kind of a logical one. He didn't respond to a single point and just started screaming about racism. <laughs> Am I missing something? Is that what it was? Yeah, that's exactly what it was. I mean, he's, he's saying that I'm a, a terrorist manifesto, toting uh, conspiracy nut. And the reality <laughs> is he's, he's still, all he was, he wants to get on TV and he wanted to advocate for a nutty position. And you're right, um, as a number of us raised, he interrupted our proceeding. And Democrats have said, if you interrupt a congressional proceeding, that's the definition of insurrection. And so the police had to take him out. Um, he was invited there by the Democrats. That's what I'm informed. And so he's trying to grift on this whole thing, it looks like. And uh, he, he should probably be brought up in charges. Where is that J6 committee when you need him? That kid, and I know a lot of your colleagues went to Harvard, and a lot of Americans still think it's impressive. At some point, knowing that kid got into Harvard, can we just all admit it's actually kind of a mediocre joke or no? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Harvard, Harvard has gone the way of, the, of all the woke post-secondary institutions in the country. There's very few of them that aren't going to turn out somebody who's as radical as that. And, uh, you know, stoking the fire like that is what the Democrats did. That's why they wanted him there. They were, they were hoping for that kind of incident. I think that kid's too dumb to host a cable news show, and that's saying a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Congressman Andy Biggs.